Hello and welcome back to Gale Bears Repairs. Today we've got a big job on this 2011 Citroen C3. We're going to attempt to replace the clutch. So I've not replaced one on here before, so we'll uh, we'll be learning as we go. I'm trying to do a comprehensive video um, showing everything, so I hope you like it. If you do, could you remember to like, subscribe and share. Right, let's get on with it. Okay, just looking at this job, it would appear to gain access. I've got to remove the battery to gain some room on the top of the gearbox, on top of the bellows in. I've already removed both wheels. I'm gonna to have to take off the plastic tray, the arch liner to gain access to the gearbox. And also, I'm going to have to take off the under trays. So just down under the front of the car, I'm going to have to take away the, the under trays. These here, underneath to gain access. I won't bore you with all that. They're like 10 mil head bolts, 10 mil heads, six M6 threads. So we'll take them off and take the arch liners out so we can actually see what we're doing. We're gonna have to remove the battery to gain access to the top of the bellows and bolts in a minute. So the positive connection, I think is under here. That's the positive lead. You pull that catch up, lift off the cable. It's just a clamp. Pull these cables out from the clamp there, slide them. And then under here, I think is the, yeah. So that's where this, this whole assembly, I think slides. So once you've disconnected there, got a bit of leeway there. Push this whole thing to the rear and then it lifts off and you can move it out of the way. So that's the positive, positive side of the battery removed and then we get off the case, the cover that hides the battery. I managed to do it with a little bit of uh, Jiggery pokery. I managed to get the protective cover off the battery, which has then exposed the negative connection there. It looks like it's a 10 mil, 10 mil bolt to undo the connection. So that's him out of the way. I'm guessing now we can lift the battery out if he's not clamped. No, he's clamped, so I'll find the clamp. Well, it's a bit of faffing around to get into that. I've got to put the positive connections back over it. And there's the engine ECU, I'm guessing, there. I've had to slide that out in order to gain access to that 10 mil bolt there, or 10 mil head on the bolt for the battery clamp, which is right there. It's quite a way down in there. I've had to use some extensions to get in. the clamp <laughs> or not where are you bolt there we go take two and there's the clamp that holds the battery in place okay we should better lift it out now there's the battery and allow me now to remove the, the battery tray. And there's the battery tray I want to get out with, looks like a couple of M6 bolts holding it in. Okay, once you've removed those two bolts from the tray, you've just got to give it a hard pull because it's retained in with these clamps into there. So just give it a, a real hard pull. You think you're going to break it. You think you're going to break it, but you won't. And then you've got to undo that bolt there, this one, in order for you to slide the tray. And then you can remove it. But it, it's still connected, so now it'll come out. But it's still connected to wiring looms and stuff. So push the clips through on the wiring looms and remove the 
remove the battery tray. Okay, so there's <laughs> the many parts of the battery tray to come out. Okay, so here's what you can expect to see when you've removed the battery. That's the positive block from the battery. That's the engine ECU out, just out the way. The battery tray was here. And then what you're looking at here, I'm guessing we're going to have to take off that electrical connection, that earth connection to start with. Okay. Put a jiggery pokey on the electrical connection there. They can be a pain sometimes. So there's the electrical connector out. Now I'm going to do that earth, earth bolt there. 13 mil. Put the bulk back in for safekeeping. So we're looking in pretty good shape up here, really. Got the electrical connector off and the earth bolt, the earth clamp there. There's the selector shaft there for the gear, but it goes to the gear stick. I think we pop off. Let's get me pointer. I think we've got to pop off this rose joint here this uh, little press ball joint connector i think that's got a prize off and we'll go downstairs and start disconnecting the drive shafts okay the next job we're underneath the car we've got to take out the drive shafts from each side so it goes there and goes into the gearbox there and then the drive shaft that goes out to the other side is there and goes out to the wheel there. So we have to get the drive shafts out. Before we can do that, we need to drain the oil from the gearbox, which is there, there's the sump plug. It's there, so we have to undo that plug and drain the oil. Out of interest, this is an eight mil square drivelet. It's not. Okay, so we just crack off the Get my bowl. Don't tell the wife I'm using the washing up bowl. So we take a plug out and uh, catch the oil. There it is. This stuff smells. Try not to get it on your skin or your uh, clothing, it'll stink. Right, the oil's finished draining. What I'm gonna do is put this in and tighten it up now so I can't forget it later on, so. Give them a good tighten. Right, we'll start removing the drive shafts now. Okay, to get the drive shafts out, the next job is to undo the centre nut off the hub. On this particular vehicle on the C3, it's a 30 mil. I tend to put something in there into the vented part of the disc to jam it up. And these have gone up tight. Just get a long bar, get a breaker bar, crack them off. Remove the nut. Okay, at this point, we've wound the nut off. We can take that out now. And then we just want to break free the drive shaft from the splines within. So don't bruise this over. Piece of wood. Give it a good tap to break it free. There, he's starting to move. I saw him move. So that's adequate. Got a bit of movement on there, so that'll make it easier after. Same process on the other side. I'm not going to repeat the other side, but it's the same process. Both have got to come out. Right, we'll get underneath and uh, disconnect the wishbone. Okay, we're down underneath the car now. I'm going to disconnect the lower arm and there's 16 mil nuts. Three of them there. I'm going to disconnect them this way. There is another way. I'm going to do these. So I'll disconnect those three and then we'll pop the uh, lower arm away. Okay, so I've I'm done the three nuts. There was a Torx, a Torx head on the top of the bolt. The bolt head's got a Torx fitting, nuts underneath. So now I can separate the arm. So we're gonna get a bit of jiggery puggery. So there's the Torx, the Torx head in there. We can push this assembly away and we'll have to go out and probably tap the drive shaft inwards 
probably have to tap the drive shaft in whilst pulling the hub assembly out. Okay, so we're on the outside now. We've now got movement on the, the hub assembly. We can move it in and out. So now we're gonna tap the center of the drive shaft through because we have some movement there, he's gone in, look. But he is quite tight, this one. He's a bit dry. So there, now you can see it moves. So now we should be able to pull this hub assembly out. If there's enough room, there it goes. So now we can get the drive shaft out. So that's disconnected. You see it there, maybe. So if I give him a pull, it should come out of the gearbox. And there it is. So that's the drive shaft. The drive shaft on this side of the car removed. So this is the outer bit. That's where the nut was. That's where the hub nut goes. And there's the splines that they dry up. Those splines can dry and then seize in. And those splines come out through there. Here's a gearbox end. Looks like on this one, there's no circlip to retain it. It popped out very easily. That's why we dropped the oil first. Because when you pull these out, the oil will spill on the floor. I'm a bit out of breath because it's hot. <laughs> and I'm fat. Um, I'll go and do the other side now, but I won't film that. I'll only, I'll only film it if there's anything different to this side. Okay, so I think the next thing I'm going to do, looking at this job, is take off this gearbox mount here. It looks like two bolts there. I think a captive nuts on the other side. So 16 mil heads, so a 16 mil socket for those. Get that um, gearbox mount out, I think. So just two bolts. There's the lower gearbox mount. So we should have a bit of movement on the engine now. Yeah, so now he's starting to move that. So we're starting to free things up. Okay. We've got um, two bolts that hold the piston or slave cylinder or whatever it is, the clutch actuator. This is hydraulically operated. So we'll undo these. So there we go. So I've just released the two bolts. And I've pulled a cable clip off there that holds the hydraulic hydraulic line in. So there we are. This is what you can expect to see. I think if we pop this off, it's just a plastic arm in there, I think. Yeah, so it's just a plastic, plastic arm. And there's the actual piston that moves in in there. When you push the clutch, when you depress the clutch, that's a piston that you're pushing on. So. Okay, we're up around the back of the engine. And I don't know if you can see it up there, but there's the starter motor. I've got my ratchet hanging off of the top Allen bolt. It, it goes over the top of the starter motor, so it's actually a bit of a pig to get to. I'll feed the camera up there, I sort of see it. I'm on the top, and here's the lower one. So that's the same bolt head over the top of the starter and I've had to use a little extension on my quarter drive. So I've got a Allen bolt up there. So I'll undo the top one and I'll undo the bottom one to see whether it comes out or whether there's a third one or not. We'll find out. Okay, it's worth noting this is a absolute pig and I had to find it. So I've done the two starter motor bolts, but there is one. I don't know if I'll be able to get in and see you. There is one there. You have to fish around. You can just get a visual on it through the wheel arch. That's how I've seen it. There's another another six mil Allen head bolt there coming in from the other side of the starter. So two come in from the, what well, I would say the rear of the starter. And this one comes in through the front of the starter and through the um, bellows and through the gearbox casting. So be aware of that. It's a struggle, an absolute pig. Right, we'll crack on. So there we are. So there's two bolts, there's one around the top, 
one around the top of the starter motor from this side. There's this one, you can see now, look, it's, it's loose. And then there's that one around the top that I was unaware of. It comes in from the other side. So these come in from this side, that one comes in from the other side over the top. That's a real good tip because you'll be struggling with that. And it is a struggle. So I'll carry on and just slide the uh, starter motor back out of the way. So there's the starter motor out. I just pulled him out. I'm just going to leave him hanging off the cables there. I've not done this job before on this car, so I don't know if that's the correct thing to do. So I'll just push it out of the way. Okay, the next job is to disconnect the selector rods, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this properly. So we're in there. There's two of them. There's a the ball joints. So there. Yes, I think I've got a picture for you. So there's the ball joint there. Get your spanner underneath it. Pop them off. There we go. Very basic. They just pop off on a little ball joint. And there's another one. There's another one there, look. There's two selectors. In there. Same again. Pop them off. So we do those, and I may take a bracketry off to uh, have more clearance. Okay, I'm now going to try and take off the bracketry that the selector rods are attached to. And it's there, this plastic assembly here. I don't know if it's a right way thing to do. That bolt there. It's a 14 mil head, and there's one around the bottom side. So I'll undo that bolt now and then go underneath and see whether that bracket removes. Okay, down below, uh, there's the other half of that bracket. There, that bolt there. And I think it's just that those two bolts, the one up the top and the one down below that holds the selector rods into place. So I'll try and undo that now and see whether it all moves out the way. Yeah, so the bolts are undone. So now that bracket is adrift. It's now released. So that will now allow the selector, selector rods or cables or whatever they are to uh, move out of the way. So I think I can now start undoing around the bellows in. All right, so up there we've got a bellows and bolt. If it can in focus. So there's the bellows and bolt there. I'm going to undo that one. And undo. And then there appears to be another one there. Another bellows and bolt. And another one there. I'll just show you cracking up. So we're starting to undo the bellows in now. There's a different bolt there. I'll show you that one in a minute. I'll just undo these and then I'll get onto that one. This bottom bellows and bolt here, I've, I've wound him out, but he hits the exhaust. So I'm not going to take the exhaust out of the way. He's released from the threads. He's released from the threads in the gearbox. So we'll just leave him there hanging. Right, we've got this set up here. 16 mil nut and a female Torx on the end. It's a stud. So there's the three, the female Torx. Maybe a bit wobbly because I'm holding the camera. Crack off the 16. There we go. It's a bit bad for it because I'm holding it. Crack off the 16 and then wind out. Wind out the stud with the female torch bit. I think this is done for accessibility so it's not, you don't have to pull it out over the stud. I don't know why they just didn't fit a bolt. I don't understand it, but uh, so you take it out that way. You can leave the nut attached. And then when you go to refit it, you just wind it down close and nip up the nut. So that's a useful tip there. So we'll just work our way around, around the bellows in of the gearbox, undoing stuff as we go. Okay, I found an absolute pig of a bellows in bolt to get out here. This is a DPF fit with the exhaust. And there's a bellows in bolt right, right there. That's the bellows in bolt. But beside it is a stud for the DPF. 
there i think you could just see it there so that studs in the way so what i'm going to do put a 13 mil on the actual nut wind that out and then get the same thing I don't know if you see in this a female torx wind out that stud and then i'm hoping that once that's out of the way that'll give me the clearance to remove that bolt for the bellows in there let's see how we get on eh yeah, I think that's going to work. I've just got the Torx on the stud. It's a bit shaky because I'm holding the camera again. So there it is. Look, it's come out. Yeah, that should do it. So that's a DPF securing stud there. And there's the Torx, the Torx head on it. So that's now... Oh yeah, you can see that lovely. So that's now from there. So now I'll be able to, that's removed. I will be able to, I will be able to do a steady picture. <laughs> I'll now be able to undo that bellows and bolt. So, and then I think we go around the top. That's worth noting that one is, uh, that's a saves removing the exhaust. Yeah, so there he is. That's that's the bolt there. I don't know if I can get my hands in it. So there, the bolt's now wound up. That's a bellows and bolt with that stud removed. He won't come right out. He's gonna have to stay in there, but he is he is free, but he is released from the bellows and so he, he'll just stay there and then we'll catch him when we're re refitting. Okay, so working our way around the top of the bellows in now. Um, not there. That is a nut that's holding a bracket. And below it is the actual bellows and bolt. So I'll undo that nut. I don't know if I can reach it. Oh, holding the camera now. I'll remove it and then show you. So there it is. There's the nut. And that was on that side of the bracket there. And the bracket goes on. It's very difficult to film here onto that bellows in stud bolt. So that's another bellows in bolt there. But it's got a stud attached to it for the bracket. And there's another one in the background there. I think that may be the last one in the background there. So I'll undo that and then show you. So there he is, the top. One of the top bellows in bolt. It's all the way up there. That's what you can expect there. It's a stud. So there's that stud bolt type thing. Unusual, unusual bolt that. So it's just a bolt, but it's got a stud on the end of it. And it's that nut that was attaching that bracket of the loom on it. So that's the actual bellows and bolt there. So just on the last of the bellows and bolts, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There's one in there. I'm filming this blind. Oh yeah, I think there, that stud. It's got the, um, so I'm just gonna crack off the nut nut and then it looks like the same, whereas it's got the Torx, the Torx piece on it. Yeah, there, look. I can't point to it because I can't get my hand in there. So I think it's the same setup as before where it's crack off the nut and then wind out the stud with the torque socket. Bit of a pain, but that's in under there, look, for access. So that's where you're going, up under there. So I've just uh, tried to prise the box apart a bit and it is moving, look. So we can safely say, we pretty much got all the uh, all the bolts around or else it wouldn't part like that. So now what I need to do is I'm in a pit here. So um, it's a bit different for me. If I was on the floor, I'd put a jack, put a jack under there with a piece of wood to protect the sump to take the weight of 
the engine. So I'm going to have to put a piece of wood. I'm going to have to put a piece of wood across the pit and then jack off of the piece of wood to prop the engine up. I'll set that up now. So that's the setup I've got. Just jacked up under the sump. Bit of wood to protect the sump because only a soft, thin steel one. I've got. I've got a piece of wood across the pit, but you would be on the floor if you're doing this on your back. So just taking the weight. So yeah, so the gearbox now look is flexing quite nicely. So now we'll go up top and disconnect the mount up there that the gearbox is hanging on. So we're in through the top. There's those two bolts there. We need to undo those. The top gearbox bolts are out, there they are. And if I give it a wiggle, a bit of a jiggery poop, you'll be able to see the whole gearbox assembly moving. There it is. So we'll try and wiggle it out now. So there we go. That's the gearbox swinging. There's little dowel pins there. That's what I was trying to wiggle it out on earlier. That's what I thought it was caught on, dowel pins, but... Uh, um, I'm going to have to put the camera on a stand. I'm not sure how it's going to do now, but it's just wrestle the thing out of the hole now. Just thought I'd show you that uh, on this car, it seems to be a decent amount of room there. As you can see, the chassis is high. You haven't got a leg down here or anything. It's, uh, it's quite a good opening. So. Give him a wiggle. You gotta mind your fingers here. You're gonna get you're gonna get hurt. Right away, I can see a problem. I need to get that uh, stay bar out, that cross member. It's nothing, looks like a couple of bolts. Alright, I'm back again. There's that tie bar, like strut brace type thing goes across. I've just undone it at one end, slacken the other end off and spin it out of the way. Now I can attempt to lift the gearbox down again for a second time and we'll see what happens. Oh, he's dropped it out already. <coughs> and there's the gearbox. Gearbox out. So that's the gearbox removed, and here's what we are, uh, we're just trying to gain access to, which is the clutch. I'll get you off the mount, and then uh, I'll catch my breath, and <laughs> I'm not used to this work thing, I'll catch my breath, and then uh, I'll show you what's in there. So this is the hole that you're left with when you take the gearbox out. There's a bit of a gaping hole under there. And this is what we're we're here to do. We're here to do the clutch. So, so far, all we've done is gained access to the job. So if you're doing a clutch for the first time, this is what you can expect to see. You've got a ring of bolts around the outside, the Torx bits. I'll show you them when we undo them. And in the center there is the actual clutch plate with the splines on it. That's got to be central so when we reassemble you realize why it's got to be central um those splines there the shaft on the gearbox the first motion shaft has got to go into there so it's got to be central shall i say central again <laughs> i'll show you that on the gearbox now the first motion shaft so there's the first motion shaft on the gearbox with the splines on it there so those splines, when we refit, that shaft has got to slide right down through the centre of those splines on the clutch. All right, we get to removing the clutch now. Okay, so it's at this point of the job, when you're doing a clutch, I would recommend that you dust mask up. Because the friction material on there is worn away. There's the dust, you don't know what it is, you don't know how it's going to affect your lungs in the future. T40 Torx bit, just a standard T40 Torx bit. It's very basic, 
to remove the clutch, we just go around, undo these around the outside. So that's all the uh, that's all the bolts undone. It'll now be on some little dowels, I think. So you have to work him off the dowels. It'll be on some little pins. Work him off there. So there's the clutch. So that's the pressure plate. And there's the actual there's the actual clutch plate there. Keep it as it is there, laid like that. Take a picture because it may have to go a certain way around. So this has got the springs in the depth. So just take a photo at this point and it'll save you some hassle later on. But I think a lot of the clutches now are marked with engine one side, you know, it'll, it'll be written on there, but just take a picture at this point and you'll cover your ass. So I have to go and get a, a clutch now we're going to examine this while we're here, <clears throat> the flywheel. This looks okay, bit, bit of heat marking on there, but it looks in good order. So we'll give this a clean up. This is the dust. You don't know what this dust is. Don't breathe it in. Just don't breathe the dust in. Visual examination. If you've got any oil in here, you don't want oil in there. That would be the seal from the engine. So this is bone dry, so this is perfect. This is a solid flywheel. It's a solid flywheel on this car. It's not got a um, dual mass. So it is literally bolt that back up, the new one. <clears throat> so I'll get on with cleaning up now. Well, I thought I'd set up and show you the gearbox and the drive shaft assembly. Why well, you've got to take both drive shafts out to get the gearbox out. The drive shafts go in to each side of the differential. So in order to get the gearbox out, you have to remove both drive shafts. That's why we do it. When we disconnected the linkage off the top of the ball joints, that's what we're disconnecting. That's the selector for changing gears. And that one there. So that's that's what we were disconnecting there. And then around the back, I don't know if we can see it. That's the that's the actuator there for when you actually depress the clutch with the pedal. That's what it pushes with the slave cylinder, the hydraulic cylinder. And that does squeaky flip-flops <laughs> that does inside when you do the arm it moves the release bearing through the arm very basic moves the release bearing through there and then your actual clutch assembly that's on the car on the engine that's bolted to the engine and then the clutch plate with those splines goes on there. And that's how it, uh, that's how it mounts onto that, uh, onto the uh, first motion shaft there. So that bolts to the engine. So that's it. That's the setup. It gives you an idea of what, what to expect when you're in there, when you get in and what it does, it's operation. Hope that's of some help to you if you're new to new to changing clutches.
All right, I'm going to show you the release bearing here. So the arm there pivots on a ball joint in behind there. It comes up behind the bearing and presses the bearing to release the clutch. Slides on this tube and it's attached to the back of the fork, but I've snapped that off. I'll show you on the new one how it's done. So the bearing comes away there. That's the release bearing, but I've snapped off some two tangs. I'll show you on the new one how it does. And then this pops off on the ball, on the little ball put joint there. It'll pull it through. And there's a there's a ball in the socket. So that's how that's done. It just goes in there and presses presses onto the ball. You can get wear on this tube. This one looks okay. It doesn't look bad. And it wears from the bearing going in and out all the time every time you depress the clutch. This one looks in good condition. You would be heavily scored or pitted. Um, and that is replaceable with three bolts, but this one doesn't need it. I've cleaned it up, it looks good. So I'll get the new clutch components now and show you what's required there. Right, we've got the release bearing, we've got the, the fork here. That's where the um, slave cylinder presses. And there's a ball joint there that it pivots on. So just for that ball joint, we'll just give it a very slight smear of grease on there. So that's uh, lubricated. And then on the little trumpet thing here, a small amount of grease, only minor amount for the release bearing to go up and down on. We don't want to over grease this because the clutch dust, the dust from the clutch as it wears will go on here and clog it up. So a small amount, just a small amount on the splines. To and here's the actual release bearing. And there's the two tangs there that I was talking about. So with those tangs, they have to go on this fork. The bearing's that way. So this is the back of the fork. And those two tangs, I don't know if you're in shot. Those two tangs have got to go there and there. That's what retains it to the fork. It can be a bit tricky. We've got to get this right or else it's uh, major problems, we have to get the gearbox out after. So then you've got it in there attached. And then we slide the fork through the bellowsing and then the bearing down the trumpet there. And then when we push it on, we click on there. So we've clicked on that ball joint there into the socket and there, so now the bearing goes in and out with the fork. You've got to make sure it's attached to those two little tangs in the back. It's critical at this point. So that's it. That's all we need to do to the gearbox. So here's the two clutches side by side, the new one and the old one. There's a new release bearing and you can see just here those tabs that are snapped off on the other one. So there's just two little tangs there and there. Whereas they sheared off on the other one when I was messing around. You can see the depth of the uh, friction material here on the new clutch. And you can see the lack of it on the old one. So something that we have to do is compare the pressure plate, the hole alignments, and on the clutch plate itself, the actual important thing to check is that the splines are the same. And there they go, so they match up. So that's all we need to do there. Make sure everything's done. We'll spray this with um, we'll spray this with brake cleaner to get rid of any oils that are on there, residual oils for uh, to prevent rust. Give that a spray up, and then we'll get fitting it on the engine. A little spray of the brake cleaner.
Okay, we're going to fit the pressure plate. Well, I'm going to offer it up just to see whether it's any good to start with. And just something worth noting, the dowels there, they uh, are there. And there's another one there. The small dowel goes in a small hole and they should line up. It only go one way. So then that your main securing bolts will line up around the circumference. So I've just put that in to make sure it is the same. I'll take it off now and put the clutch alignment tool on with the with the plate as well. Okay, next we've got to set up the clutch alignment tool. This is one I got here. I borrowed it off of a friend. Um, it's only a cheapy one. It's only a Draper one. Comes with a few parts. So there's the shaft through there, and this one goes into the splines fits into the splines there of the clutch plate itself. So what we're trying to do is as we do up this nut, this narrowed nut here, as we do that up, it pulls this in and then flares this out on the taper there. Don't know if you can see that, if the camera's picking it up, but it slides and expands. And that's how it grips the clutch plate. So, We've got this the correct way around. When we took them apart, we noted that the deep side was in there. We've degreased. So we get the clutch plate. We want it central. The outer diameter of the clutch plate itself is the same as the outer diameter of this um, material here. So we put that there. We feed this one in if possible so we feed that through and into the splines and I'll flip them around so you can see there so you can see the blue I don't know if you can but there's the blue plastic in there so as we wind it up this is going to go in and expand that and we want this plate this plate to be central all the way around. So we'll grip it and then we can adjust it. So we do that and then we do it up. Put this knurled nut on. So this is now expanding that blue collet. And as it's expanding it in there, it's gripping, it's gripping the, the outer surface here. So we're gonna Effectively, we're just clamping this together as a sandwich. That's all we're doing. So what we're after there, what we're out to achieve is this clutch plate being equal all the way around in the center. And it isn't at the minute. There's a lip there and there's no lip there. So we just give them a little tweak around, get him central. So he's now central. I think you can see that. So it's now central all the way around. So it's gripped as we want it now. So then when we pin this up on the flywheel, we know that when we do up those bolts on the flywheel, this is going to be pinned in a central position in order for us to catch the first motion shaft on the splines from the gearbox. All right, so we're going to offer up the clutch now. And remember, notice those little dowels there that we've got to get on. Last minute check that the clutch is aligned, which it is. And then we just get the dowels aligned there. Press them in on the dowels. I'll just catch a bolt to hold it up there to make it safe. <laughs> or maybe two bolts. Right, so he's up in place now. 
little bit of thread locker on the bolt. We don't want these coming undone. For some reason, my uh, phone decided to stop then. Good job I heard it. So I'm stood in a pit here, which makes it easier for me. If you were doing this, you'd be sat, sat with your bum here, your legs under there, in, with your head in here. My advice, if you were doing this job without a pit or a lift, would be to jack the car, get the car as high as you can on the axle stands to give you the maximum amount of room under here to work. Right, so now we've got to go around. We've got to do these up and we'll do them in a sequence. We'll go diagonal. We'll go there, 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 there. We'll just pin him down because he's got to, he's got to compress in against the spring. So we'll do like a little bit there. A little bit there. Yeah, and then we just go diagonal. So feeling the bottom out, feeling the bolts bottom out where it's pulled in, pulled in the plate, the pressure plate in onto the flywheel. It's gone in tight on the flywheel. And that's what we do, all the way around. Well, I had some real bad time in there. My uh, memory card got full on my phone, but I had to carry on tightening these up because the um, the thread locker were set. So I had to carry on, but I'll show you what I did to torque them up. I got them all nipped up tight. And then after is when I wanted to really tighten them up. I put my screwdriver in there and onto the flywheel teeth and then turned the, turned the bolt there, the bolt head, and reacted against there to stop it spinning because if you have a look, the flywheel turns, the engine turns when you start trying to tighten it up. So you need to have something to react against. And that was the screwdriver. So now we can take out the clutch alignment tool. That's that done with. So I'll just show you now that it has to be, the splines there have to be central with the with the uh, prongs there, so I don't know if you can see it. Don't know. So they have to be central in order for you to get the gearbox in. So that's fine. That looks good to me. So the next job is to actually lift up the gearbox into place. I'm uh, just about to attempt to lift up the gearbox. See if I can get it in the hole. A couple of bolts here that were left in that we couldn't remove. I'll try to get it up into position on the dowels. Um, try to get it up on the dowels and then uh, try to catch a bolt just to make it safe so it takes the load off. I don't know what you're going to see. I may be in the way here. I don't know, but I'll have to be in the way because I've got to struggle lifting this up. So let's have a let's have an attempt. Attempt number one. 
Yeah, really easy job. <laughs> yeah, he's heavy. You got to wiggle him side to side to get the uh, to get the splines aligned between the clutch and the first motion shaft. So he's up. He's up and he's safe. And uh, my obesity is catching up with me. <laughs> All right, let's we'll start uh, catching a few bolts. I've had a bit of struggle in lifting it up. Um, I had to get my pry bar under there, under this thing, give the uh, give the gearbox a little wiggle. Um, I had on the dowel there. I didn't clean up the dowel pins, so I'd recommend you give them a little emery over or something, get rid of slight corrosion, because I did have to just tap them in, just tap the gearbox in with a hammer on there, but I wouldn't recommend that because it's cast alley and you may may snap it. So give those dowels a clean up. That's something that I've not done. So I'm now doing that awkward bellows and bolt in by the DPF. Flex head ratchet spanner, which is perfect for this job. So next bolt around the back. Exhaust is in the way because the engine's dropped slightly on the jack, so I'll just prise the exhaust out of the way a little bit. I'm just pulling all these in, all these bolts in. We'll work our way around. I want to get some in on the top now. If I get some in around the top, we'll pull in the gearbox and then square on. If I get a couple at the top, then I'm going to put the slave cylinder on and check for pedal before we get too deep. All right, I'm in through the wheel arch. And up there, I've just caught that bolt up the top there. That one, he's the one with the stud on him on the head to catch the bracket. So I've put that in at the top just to pin in the gearbox. So I've got a few along the bottom, one on the top. So I'll now connect the uh, slave cylinder and see whether we've got a pedal. Right, I'm just going to put the uh, slave cylinder up, a couple of bolts there. I've smeared a little bit of grease in there, just a tad of grease, just to uh, lubricate it for the future. Okay. When you put the plunger in, you've got to depress it, so you're going against the hydraulic oil when you put it up there. So it's now the piston is compressed so that when you put your foot on the clutch, it forces a piston out, which actually disengages the clutch mechanism. So we just put that up. It's purely, we put this up purely to see whether the clutch actually operates on the pedal. Uh, that's all, and then we can continue with the build. We don't want to go too deep and find we've got something wrong internally. So I'll go and press the clutch now and we'll see what happens. Yeah, so I've been up, done the clutch half a dozen times, done it six times, no problems. We've got spring tension, uh, no clunks, no clicking. Uh, the pedal returns up nice, so I'm confident to carry on reassembling the uh, bellows and bolts. I'm not sure how much of that I'm going to film. It's just the reverse of what we took out with those uh, studs with the Torx heads. They're fiddly. It may get a bit monotonous and boring, but the actual... Effectively, the job of replacing the clutch is done, really. It's just rebuilding all the drive shafts, putting the oil in. I've got some information on the oil that's of interest. 
So I think I'll just uh, set it going, maybe a bit of time lapse type thing, just to, to show me going around the bellows. And... Okay, I'm trying to display the top bellows and bolts because they are the pig up there. So up around the top, I've caught that one. That was the one that I'd done up tight to check the clutch operation. And I've left one out there so you can see it. So it's there. That's the stud hanging out. I've left it out so you could get a visual of it, but that's around the top of the bellows and under, under all that pipe work. So you can't see it from above. Next thing I'm gonna do, while the engine's still dropped off its mount, the starter motor looks closer to me. So if you remember, it was those Allen head bolts, three of them. So I'm gonna catch the catch a starter up now, try and button that up while the engine still drops slightly. So Just a uh, useful bit of information there. I've got good lighting on it now, you can see it better. So I've got there is the starter motor bolt from this side. I've done the starter motor now, which was I think a lot more accessible with the engine and gearbox drop down. Um, I want to collect up the selector rods next. So the selector cables. So I'm going to move the jack from the engine across to the gearbox because I, I want to connect up the top mount now for the gearbox. So if you were doing this on your drive on the floor, this wood is, is the floor. So it's just because just I've got the pit. So we're just going to jack the car, jack the, uh, jack up the box. So as I'm jacking, I've noticed I'm hitting the subframe there. So as I jack, I'm just holding it across off the subframe. Right, I've had a bit of a struggle. It's been a bit of a struggle getting it in here. Um, there's a flat, I was over here, jacking off of here on the gearbox, and that was spinning the engine, rotating it, so it was no good. So underneath the lowest point there, there is a flat. I will record that. I'll show you that flat to jack off of when, um, when I've got the jack out of the way. But it's been a struggle, but now, it's all free, it's moving, there's plenty of movement. But when I was jacking over here, it was rotating it and it was all binding up. So jack under the lowest point, one to remember. There we go, I can just hear the bolts. Yeah, the bolts are just snagging on the top of the gearbox mount. So I'm gonna go up the top now. So here we are back up by the battery box or where the battery box was and here's the, the mounts that we're trying to align. There's the engine moving if I ro rock the engine in the box. See here there's the witness marks of where the bolt used to be, the bolt head, so with the dart there. So that witness mark. So that's what I'm going to go for for alignment. Just place those two bolts there. They're nicely tightened up. The gearbox and the engine's hanging off of those. I'm going to go down and have a look at the um, selector linkage now, that uh, plastic bracket. Here's that plastic selector rod bracket. There's a bolt there and then one over the top up where we were just now. So it's in position now. I'll tighten up those two bolts. I'm not going to show that because uh, it's just doing up a couple of bolts. Okay, I'll so it's now to put the lower mount in. By leaving this off, it's enabled me to get access to the starter motor and to the selector rod bracket and all that. So nice time to put it back now. I think it's uh, been off long enough. Re obviously the reverse to removal.
next thing I'm going to do, a little bit of grease just on those selector ball joints there that we popped off earlier. Just a small one now, just for the air strap. I'm just going to smear a little bit of grease on the top of the cast in there of the of the bellows in the gearbox. I'm just going to smear a bit of grease around that connection just to keep the moisture out for the future, that's all. So this is the main negative from the battery to the engine block or to the, to the gearbox. I'll just do that one up. All right, that's it nice and tight. So then the other thing here that we can do while we're here is that electrical plug, I'm guessing for So we get him in, just, just press him in. Just wait for the snap in, which he has. Okay, next job is to fit the drive shafts back. Got to clean up the splines before we put them back in the car. Just give him a quick wire brush up. There they are, all clean. We'll smear a bit of grease on the spline. Okay, we're fitting the, refitting the drive shaft. And we've got the seal there. And it's just been out of the car for a bit, so we'll give it a little wipe around. Make sure there's no dirt ingress, any bits of grit, etc., from the workshop. So that's done. Then I'll just dip my finger in the oil that we drain. Just dip my finger in there and just give it a smear around. So now that's lubricated. I'll take the I'll take the bag off of the uh, end of the drive shaft. That was there. I've got the bag there to keep the grit to keep the grit and the dirt out of out of this machine surface here. So yeah, again, I'll just smear a little bit of oil around that to aid uh, to aid refitting. I don't know if you can see that, just putting a bit of oil around to aid insertion. Okay, so we've got to swing out the, the hub there. We have to spin it to locate the splines. Then we force out the hub. There he goes, there he's in. Force out the hub and put the uh, CV joint into the hub there. We have to give it a rotate and there he is. Now we can connect up the bottom ball joint. So I've just dropped in the three bolts there to hold on the uh, bottom ball joint to the wishbone. Um, it's the same on the other side, so I'm not going to repeat the process. Um, the only difference is the drive shaft on this side in the UK on the near side. It's got a short drive shaft and on the other side it's a long drive shaft. But you can't get that wrong. But the process is exactly the same. Give a good nip. There we go. Nice firm nip. He's got to be well, nice and tight. Right, we're going to tighten up the hub nut. 
there's the nut so it's that side in there with the cone sort of thing on the outside with that portion out facing out towards you so we just spin on the nut and put the pliers in there in the in the disc to jam it up and then for this vehicle of preset him is 245 newton meters on the torque wrench you have to use a torque wrench on this nut so it's 245 and we'll wait for the click there he goes you don't whip it you just gently gently wait for the torque right so we've torqued the hub nut to 245 newton meters which is only applicable for this citroen c3 of this age it varies on all different cars so get your torque setting that you require for your vehicle what you've got here on the hub nut on the axle with the cv joint the splines there it's got notches in it two notches there machined in and they are for us to stove in stove in the edge of the nut which is weak as a locking device so the nut can't come undone so you just get a parallel punch or a screw, old screwdriver and a hammer and you just knock him in and that's that's how you know then that the nut you can see it there the nut won't come undone this is it cannot undo so i'll go and do the other side it's exactly the same um excuse the poor lighting but here's the setup i've got a funnel with a bit of hose pipe on it jammed down into the breather here's the oil i'm fitting 75 w80 gear oil two liters so we'll get pouring it in To be honest with you, this looks a lot cleaner than the uh, stuff I tuck out, so looks like it was worth doing. I'm only doing this job as part of a clutch renewal on my son's car, so I'm glad that I'm uh, putting this new oil in. Looks like it was overdue. So there we are. That's the two litres of oil in. So there's that cap. Nothing special. It's only a vent for the gearbox, just presses back in. Okay, I'm just going to prove that this is two litres of oil that's come out. There was no leaks whatsoever on the gearbox, there was no dampness around the seals, nothing, it's bone dry. So this is the oil we removed. Just look at the color of it compared to the new stuff that went in. What we're out to achieve here is, uh, is to show that the gearbox does hold two liters. Battery trace, the metal frame's gone back in. It's just that one. It's reversed to the beginning of the video. Next in is the plastic battery tray. Okay, so there's the plastic battery tray back in. Two securing bolts there and there. So there's the battery clamp there one bolt there i think i'm going to uh, call it a day now because the light's fading it's not a very good quality video so i'll get back to you when it's daytime there we go it's the next day now we've got some better lighting um i've put the 
battery box back on the cover slid that back on the connections there and reconnected everything bit of vaseline on the top of the connections keep the moisture out for the winter so we should be good to go all right so there we have it big job i think you'd agree for a home mechanic um just remember if you're doing this on the on your driveway or on the pavement jack the car up as high as you can get it as high as you can on the axle stands just one to remember so uh that's it we're all done if you've liked the video today, found it useful and helped you to replace your own clutch or give you the confidence, then could you like, subscribe and share. And I'll catch you next time for the next video.